If we know the frequency response of a linear time invariant or LTI system, like an analog filter, then we can figure out the system output when we know that the input is a sinusoid of some specific frequency. But what happens when the input is more complex, like if it has multiple frequency components, like in a periodic square wave? In our last video, we introduced the Fourier series, which gives us the spectrum for these kinds of more complex periodic signals. In this video, we're going to update our ideas about system output. Then as an example, we'll look at the low pass filter output when the input is the periodic square wave. So with the Fourier series, we're able to write signals as a sum of sinusoids or a sum of complex exponentials. The sum could be infinite, as is the case for the periodic square wave, but all the frequency components are multiples of what's known as the fundamental frequency. So in the frequency domain, instead of continuous spectrum, we get discrete spectra associated with each of the frequency components of the signal. So what happens when we're filtering a potentially infinite number of frequency components? We can recall the linearity property of LTI systems. If the input can be represented as a sum of individual component signals, then the overall output will be the sum of the outputs associated with those corresponding inputs. So when the input is a Fourier series, the output is also a series. All we have to do is multiply each Fourier coefficient with the transfer function at that corresponding frequency. So for a filter, we can think of the output of the system being like an AND operation. The Fourier coefficients that are in the pass band are kept and they're scaled accordingly. And then the Fourier coefficients for the frequencies in the stop band are blocked from passing through, so they don't appear in the output. It's best to see this in an example. So let's consider a square wave that's centered at t equal to zero. It has an amplitude of a. The square wave remains high for tau seconds, and it has a fundamental period of t naught seconds. And for this example, we'll look at the case where the fundamental period t naught is equal to two times tau. In our last video, we showed how this Fourier series is samples of a sinc function, where sinc of x is equal to sine x over x. Now let's pass this discrete sampled sinc function into an ideal low pass filter, one that has a frequency response magnitude of one for frequencies up to 1.5 times pi over tau. So to determine the output, we need to figure out which of the Fourier series components remain after the filtering. So since we have the filter response of an ideal filter, we need to figure out which of the frequency components in the Fourier series are within the pass band of this filter. Even though we usually think about frequency responses just in terms of positive frequencies, we need to remember that the negative frequencies are also included. So the frequency response of this ideal filter is one from negative 1.5 pi over tau to positive 1.5 pi over tau. We've said that the fundamental period t naught is equal to two times tau. From this, we need to work out the fundamental frequency omega naught in radians per second. The fundamental frequency in radians is going to be 2 pi times f, or 2 pi over t naught, which in this case will be equal to pi over tau. This means that the periodic square wave has spectra that exist at multiples of pi over tau, and these are integer multiples, so that includes negative numbers and it includes zero. After passing through this ideal filter, the only components that will remain will be the ones that are at zero, frequency pi over tau, and frequency negative pi over tau. These correspond to the spectral indices of 0, positive 1, and negative 1. So those are the only values of k of the Fourier series that remain at the output. Since the filter is ideal, there's no change to the magnitude or the phase associated with these components. So the output is just these three components added together. We can simplify the sinc functions. We have the sinc function at positive pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Since sinc of x is sine of x over x, we're left with 2 over pi. So we can use the properties of Euler's formula to take the two complex conjugate exponentials and combine them into a single cosine. This makes it easier for plotting the output in the time domain. So two other areas that I want to comment on associated with this example. First, we use an ideal filter. If we're working with non-ideal filters, then we're going to have non-ideal gains in the pass band and the stop band. So if we have an infinite number of inputs going into a practical filter, we'll also have an infinite number of outputs although many of them will have small magnitudes if they're in the corresponding stop bands. For the inputs that we do care about, we'd still need to scale by the magnitude of the frequency response and also adjust the phase accordingly. The second thing that I want to comment on is negative frequencies. So generally when we think about frequency responses, we usually just picture what happens with positive frequencies, but it's important to note that the negative frequencies are also still present. This is easiest to see in the Euler's formula properties because we can write the cosine as a function of complex conjugate exponentials. So we have exponentials with a positive imaginary component and a negative imaginary component. 
So this is the end of the content on analog systems that we'll be focusing on in this video series on signal processing. We'll soon be starting up our videos on digital signals and systems. That content will start with talking about conversion between analog and digital systems. So you can subscribe if you're interested in catching those videos. You can leave any other feedback in the comments, and you can also find the lecture notes PDF down in the video description. Thanks for watching.